So let's talk about how you build yourself a better, more effective resume. One of the things to first understand is this is your best marketing tool. The federal resume today contains all of the knowledge, skills, and abilities, your experience, your education, and all the things that you want the hiring person to know about you. I always like to say this is your interview on paper. So you have to be sure that you are communicating your qualifications, the experience that you want that person to know about you. Uh, you must show results. So we, not, we don't only talk about what you can do, you got to talk about how, what kinds of skills you actually utilized when you were performing your last jobs. And then more importantly, how did you bring value added to that organization? That's the result factor. Your resume should be tailored for each job, meaning that when you're looking to apply for a federal job, you're going to take the vacancy announcement, and one other document we're going to give you here very shortly is called the federal questionnaire. You're going to take those two documents, and you're going to utilize them to figure out how to best build your resume so that you can show them that you have the experience and skill sets necessary for the job you're applying to. We don't talk about pages. In many cases, people always talk about how many pages my resume should be. The key to a resume is not necessarily the number of pages, but the relevance of what you're writing about. And so we don't particularly tell you that you have to have a given number of pages, more so than we say, make sure your resume contains the relevancy that's necessary to relay what your experience in education is all about. So the best way to build that is what we call reverse chronological format. That means I take today's date, work my way backwards with my experience, and list all the jobs in that particular order in reverse fashion. So once you've gotten to reverse, you then figure out what's relevant to what you're writing about. So in particular, not necessarily do you have to tell me everything about a particular job, just the relevant pieces or skill sets and experience from that job in your resume. So that's why we don't tell you your resume must be a certain given number of pages. Uh, this is what we recommend for all resumes. However, one of the key elements is that you look at all your experience. So in many cases, if you volunteer, that's unpaid. That's just as critical and important as paid experience, if it's relevant. So remember, key here is paid experience, not paid, doesn't matter, relevancy is the key to making sure you have an effective resume. Some of the information that you're going to get, remember two key documents. Number one, vacancy announcement. We talked about that earlier. That's going to contain the information of the duties that you're going to be looking at. It's also going to contain the information that you need for the qualifications and the evaluations that they're going to be seeking and looking for when you build your resume. The second document that you need to get that information from is called the questionnaire, the Job Opportunity Occupational Questionnaire. This is linked from the vacancy announcement. So if you're not aware, once you are looking at that vacancy announcement, there's going to be a little link in there that says, as part of that application process, you must go to our link and answer our series of questions. Now what you're going to see from that is, once again, here's the vacancy announcement. Key information, duties, qualification and evals, so you have to use this to build with. So we recommend that you take that, you start to isolate, you start to highlight, and this is how you're going to get down to the information that becomes relevant to you. So the second document is our questionnaire. So once you are looking at a questionnaire, you're now going to determine that the agency is going to ask you a series of very specific questions to isolate, do you have general experience or do you have specialized experience? So they're going to use that particularly as sort of a screen out method to ask you how many times a week particularly do you maybe do this job? Are you considered maybe to be a subject matter expert? So what you're looking at here is to make sure that your resume supports the questionnaire and also the vacancy announcement. Those are the key documents that you need to use in order to build your resume with. Additionally, however, you can look at lots of your own personal information because from there you're going to determine that some of the other things that you've had in your background may contain relevant specific experience, may contain information that's going to be critical that you can build in your resume. So we start with a vacancy announcement, we start with a questionnaire, and we look at our own personal information from past jobs, customer service surveys, uh, awards, we look at all those personal documents that may yield us information that we can utilize again to support and strengthen our resume. The ultimate end, however, is not what, but also how, and also results and accomplishments. So the way that we get there is we start to look at, did I impact that organization when I was working there? Did I save some money over there? Did I improve their process? Did I ultimately maybe get an award or two? You take all that, you add it together, and you start to build in your resume by quantifying. We start by using money. We use dollars. We use percent. We use the use of time. 
We use all those indicators to actually quantify and turn our resume into something that's going to read a little stronger. Because if I start by saying what I did, that's normally a repeat of what? The vacancy announcement. So I have to personalize what I'm writing about. Show me the skills that you used on your past jobs. Did you add value to that organization as part of that? That's what quantifying actually means. We start by three steps, by reviewing, vacancy announcement. We begin by saying, is this a good match? Are you in or are you out? You see, automatically when I read the announcement, it doesn't mean that I'm going to apply because it may not be a good match. So you have to go into the duties. You have to look at the qualifications. You have to look at that questionnaire. Then you make a decision. Is it a good or bad match for you? Once you determine it's a good match, you start to identify the key words. You start to pick out and align those things into what we like to call a little list of all the duties, competencies, and skills that one might do on the new job. Once you have your list, you start to align them, you place them into bullets, and then you start to articulate how you could add value to that organization. If we take this and look at this list here, this is how we ultimately align a job announcement. So quickly, I've highlighted and picked out things that are going to be required of me on the new job. So if I use this as an example, I verify reports against source documents. The first thing you see here is this is what they're asking you to talk about. This is what they're saying you would have to do on a new job. So my job now is to personalize this, turn it into resume material. Remember not only what I did, what kinds of skills that I do in order to verify reports, and ultimately, did I add value to that organization? So we start to add some numbers. We use time, and now we start to say, I annually verified 500 reports. You see, we're using some of the same language, and we're ultimately building this into a strengthened, personalized piece for our resume. And ultimately, we talk about the skill sets. I created a new standing operating procedure, and ultimately, my results are I saved some money, and I decreased the errors. So we started with five words, and we started by saying, tell me what you actually did. I showed you the skills that I did in creating an operating instruction, and ultimately, I gave you the results that I saved some money, and I actually decreased the errors. So this is how you personalize information for your resume. Write in plain language. Uh, everybody has to think they need to come up with a 10-letter word of some type that's ultimately going to sound very good, but ultimately it's the language that you see in a vacancy announcement and a questionnaire that is plain and simple, and that's the kind of language that you need to give back to them. Uh, show your experience. Remember, the key is you must show the hiring person your strengths, what you can do, how that aligns with the organization's mission and goals. You got to stay away from acronyms. Acronyms are what you know, that short abbreviation, but I'm reading your resume and I don't know what that means. So be careful of the acronyms. Also, spelling and grammar checks. We understand that spelling and grammar checks is out there and it automatically picks up the words. However, there are words that sound just alike. To, T-O, T-O-O, and T-W-O. Spell check picks up all of them. So you have to be careful. So in other words, read your resume. Have someone else eyeball your resume. That's ultimately the way that you're going to catch any errors in your resume. But don't just rely on spell check. Applying early, remember that agencies have options, and in some cases, they may limit the number of applicants they have, and so in that case, they may pull the announcement a little bit early. So it's in your best interest to stay ahead of the game, make sure you allow yourself plenty of time to build with, and ultimately get your application in in plenty of time. Cover letters today are optional in the government, so unless it specifies directly within a vacancy announcement, when you apply for a federal position, it is going to be your option of actually doing a cover letter. The only thing that we recommend when you do a cover letter is to pay the same amount of attention to it as you do to your resume. Ultimately, this is the top document on the top of your resume.